All right, greetings everyone. Brett here with Hammerhead Model Making. And uh, for this video, I'm gonna be doing things a little bit different here. So I, I apologize that, it, that you're just looking at a blank screen here, but the, the nature of this build is such that I'm gonna to have to do a lot of experimenting and that's and I find that difficult to do on camera. So I'm gonna kind of have to do like a, a bit of a vlog for this. So I, what I want to show you is a, an image here. Um, so this this little image here, I, I know it's not very good. I'll, I'll, I'll throw up a digital copy here eventually, but um, I'm going to, be, I have a, I've been requested to build and, and recreate this specific image. So this is a M2A2 Bradley running over Saddam Hussein's limousine. Um, so I gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. And so basically what I'm what I'm doing here, I'm gonna kind of show you my plan here. So this is this is what I'm gonna be using for the diorama base. Just piece of um, uh, insulation foam. This is the same thing I used on the Panzer III diorama that I recently did. So um, we have a Bradley. So this is the Academy kit, uh, Bradley M2A2 by Academy. And I've got a resin 3D printed Mercedes sedan. So eventually what we're gonna be doing is kind of doing something like this, right? To, to recreate this, this image here. So <clears throat> there's a few things that I have to do. Uh, obviously, the first thing I'm going to have to do with the sedan is to make it look crushed and and smashed. So uh, I have a couple of techniques that I can that I believe will work for this, uh, mainly being kind of heating up the resin, uh, deforming it, and then adding cracks where I need to. Um, this in the in the digital version of the image, this door is open, so I will need to cut that out and have that open, um, as well as there's a bunch of detail uh at the front it looks like the kind of the radiator row is missing the headlights popped up so i'll have to modify that um it, i do have uh in, interior pieces for it uh these still need to get cleaned up they're they're still pretty rough off the printer but i've got interior pieces for it i've got uh tire i got four tires for it um there's a whole bottom of it that i'll go on and then I also, just from my spare bits and bins, I've got an engine I can put into it, just in case you might be able to see some of that. I've got some clear parts I can use for the headlights. Uh, I'll, I'll have all the windows kind of smashed and broken, I, and I, I've got some clear acetate that I can use for that. So I think all in all, the actual um, destruction of the vehicle will be rather straightforward. Um, there is going to be some modification to the Bradley that's going to be needed, um, notably the suspension. So you can see that the, the attitude of the vehicle is, is very, uh, nose up. So I'm going to have to modify the suspension arms to, to kind of reflect that. So that, so the kind of the first few suspension arms will need to be extended out and the back few will need to be pushed back in to kind of give it that, that nose high attitude. Um, in addition, uh, it looks like the actual uh, armored fender part in front of the dry sprocket has been removed. So I will have to, um, I'll have to cut out this panel and fabricate the attachment point behind it. Uh, in addition, it looks like there is an additional sensor up here on the turret. You can see a little bit better in this one. Um, that is not on the normal Bradley, at least not, I've, I've found very few pictures of M2A2s with that that sensor up there, and I apologize, I don't know what that sensor is. However, I, I do ha actually have one in my spare parts, believe it or not. Um, Academy made an uh, Abrams tank from about the same era as this Bradley, and the, the Abrams tank comes with that sensor, so I will rob that from my, from my Abrams to put on there. Um, a few other things, I, I purchased some... Uh, stowage sets and I, I have another one that's still on its way in the mail right now that will allow me to um kind of bulk out all the stowage on here uh i i do have another picture of the the reverse side of this vehicle as well um but basically he's got he's got a bunch of jerry cans hanging from the side here a bunch of duffel bags um there is what appears to be a either an m249 or an m240 uh, on the back deck i will i you can position the, this back hatch open um and, and it and it appears open in the photo i think that's going to be the one change i make from the the actual image is i'm going to have that closed 
mainly because the Academy kit does not come with any kind of interior and it would just kind of look bad with just like a blank empty void in there. So I will close the door, but I do have, uh, I have an M249 in 35th scale that I can use for that. And then in addition to, I will, I will be replicating the driver here in this picture. You can't see it in this picture. You can see it better in the digital picture, but the driver's head's poking out of the driver's hatch there. So um, I will be modifying a figure to match that as well. So that's kind of the 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 plan here. And um, so this hopefully this video will will kind of document the the progress on this project because I won't be doing my normal my normal f video format filming for this. So please bear with me and uh, enjoy the video. All right, so. Let me show you what I've done so far with the vehicle. We're gonna take this, move that out of the way. All right. So here's all the modifications I've made. Um, removed this skirt panel, uh, used some strip styrene just to replicate the, the structure that holds it with the uh, bolt holes there. Um, I also, based on the reference pictures I had, it looks like the crew threaded some kind of, I assume, a nylon strap through the bolts of this armor here. So I have replicated that with some uh, heavy foil, and uh, I ended up just cutting off the bolts. Fortunately, the kit actually comes with replacement bolts. Um, so I, I, I cleaned off the bolts with my knife, attached the, th the what I assume is the nylon strapping, and then replaced the bolts here. Um, it's also on this side as well, based on the reference pictures. Uh, it looks like the crew use it, would use this to actually attach all of their stowage. So there's actually gonna be a big old pack of duffel bags and backpacks over here, and there's actually gonna be some jerry cans hanging off this side here. Um, but that's pretty much as far as modifications to the upper hull itself. It's it, from, from what I can tell, the, uh, carnivore appears to be rather standard. Um, the turret, however, I've made a few modifications to the turret. So we'll remove that and we can, we can see what we've done there. So on the turret, um, this is, we've got, uh, a small box here that I've added that is, uh, apparently stowage for the grenade launchers. We've got uh, a small bracket that I added here to hold the spare tire. This is based on the reference photos as well. They have this, the spare road wheel up there. Um, this is the uh, active sensor that I have stolen off of an M1 Abrams kit. Uh, and I scratch built the little platform here based on the few reference pictures that I could find. And finally, uh, the antennas are actually magnetized. I, I did this because this is a commission build, build and I will need to be able to ship this. And so rather than have these break off, they can just be removed and packaged for shipping without the risk of them breaking. So pretty, pretty slick, I think. Um, next up for the vehicle is I will be working on arranging all of the stowage on here. Uh, like I mentioned, there's going to be a number of what it look like, you know, duffel bags and backpacks kind of all bundled up here. There's two jerry cans that are kind of tied here, hanging on the side. It appears that there's kind of various gear and kits stowed around the back deck of the vehicle, as well as in the bustle rack. So I have like sleeping bags and, and bed rolls that I can stuff in there. Um, and finally, there's actually in the picture that I'm recreating, there is a M249 on the back deck here that I will have to get added as well. So stowage will be up next. And what will what will be nice though is because because reference pictures show this strapping here, I actually have somewhere to attach the stowage to. Um, if you've if you've watched any of my other my other uh, tank episodes, either the Panzer III or the M24 Chaffee, you'll know that I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to attaching stowage onto vehicles of actually showing how is it attached to the vehicle. One of my biggest pet peeves is when someone has like a backpack like this or whatever, and they just kind of glue it wherever and without any visible means of it being attached, that always bugs me. And 
And I know that, you know, people are welcome to do, build their own models however they want to. That's fine. Um, but just, that is probably one of the few things that will like, that I will notice on someone else's model and be like, yeah, that, I don't like that. So, um, this, this setup will be nice for me to be able to actually thread in and weave in all of the stowage. So, um, but I mean, when it comes to things like putting stowage in the, the bustle rack here, it, I mean, obviously just setting in is fine because that's how it would be in real life. And, uh, that doesn't bother me. Same thing with laying, littering stuff on the upper deck. That doesn't bother me because that's how it would have been done in reality. But when you hang stuff off of the side, um, that's, that's where I start getting. All right. So we have gone ahead and primed up the Bradley, uh, just using my normal Rust-Oleum primer in black. And so I've got all the road wheels, the turret, lower hull, upper hull. I've also, sorry, I have also primed all of the stowage as well. Um, so these are all just, I've got five of these tongue depressors full of stowage. So to, to paint this, I will be using Vallejo's U.S. Modern Desert Colors to, to do this. It, it does describe a, a, a nice step-by-step -step process using all six colors. I think that might be a little excessive, uh, for this Bradley. Um, I, I think I might limit it to three colors, uh, specifically, I probably will probably start with, uh, this color as my base hit it with uh, a highlight uh, to do some kind of you know, pre-shading um, and then probably hit it with the main with this color as the main coat. So I think that's what I'm going to do, but uh, we'll go ahead and jump into that and get that started. All right, to start off, I will be using U.S. Desert Stand Sand, U.S. Desert Sand as my base coat here. There's our color modulation. Pretty straightforward. Nothing fancy. But next up, we will be applying our, uh, I believe it is, here we go, sand ivory. So this will be our final color. And I will be thinning this so that it's somewhat translucent and then applying it all over the model so that hopefully some of that modulation will show through and kind of just create some nice tonal variations in the final paint job. All right, so we're taking a break from the Bradley uh, to let some stuff cure. So right now I've gone ahead and added a layer of plaster to the diorama base. And this will kind of create the foundation for the base work. Um, I will then go, once, once this has dried and cured, I'm gonna go over and this is just uh, sandbox sand mixed with dirt from the garden. And uh, I've, I've sifted out all the super large chunks here, but from, from the reference pictures, it shows that there was, it was fairly rocky out where this picture, where the picture was taken, where this incident took place. So um, I, I think this will add a, adequately represent that and uh, so once the plaster is cured now for about a, I'll, I'll give it about an hour um, that should be kind of dry surface dry not fully cured this this is I'd say this right here in the center part it's probably a good quarter inch thick so it'll that'll take a while to fully cure um, but after an hour or so that for the most part it should be relatively dry enough just I can start putting this on and basically to, to apply this I will 
uh, do a whole layer of PVA glue over this and then start sprinkling this on. Um, I will leave two relatively free areas where the Bradley tracks will go. Just that way it's not sitting in, on any high, you know, on a rock and it'll make it look, make it look weird. It'll, it'll sit flat and, and give the appearance of weight. Um, and then I think what I'll end up doing, since I'll, I will be shipping this, is I think what I'll end up doing is creating, um, I'll attach two uh, dowels to the bottom of the Bradley and I'll create corresponding holes here so that once once the Bradley arrives at its destination, it'll be easy to, to, to assemble the diorama and, um, you know, kind of take out the guesswork there of where it's supposed to go. The car, the car I will leave attached, physically attached to the diorama base. Right now I have it in there just while the, the plaster is kind of drying. I'll probably take the car out in about 15 minutes once the plaster set a little bit. Uh, but that way I at least have, you know, kind of the, an idea of where it's going to fit in there. And then, um, then we'll start painting and everything, doing all the groundwork detailing. So there we go. And, and once, once I've done with the base, then I'll actually start painting up the, the car as well. Um, but we'll, we'll finish the Bradley before we get there. So we'll see you on the next part. All right. So we've gone ahead and added all of the dirt and sand on here. Um, I'll take that off. So <clears throat> essentially what I did here was uh, basically just squirt about probably a good quarter of this bottle of glue, PVA glue, onto the top of the surface of the, the plaster, spread it around with a nice wet brush um, to really kind of get a nice good even layer, relatively thick. And then I went ahead and sprinkled on the dirt and sand mixture, let it set for about five minutes. And then I mixed up a solution of about 75% water, 25% glue, mixed it up really good, and then dripped it on with a pipette and, and really got everything soaked. And there, you can kind of see where it is a little dark here. There's, there's still some areas that are a little, not quite as dry yet. Um, but but getting that glue soaked in there on top of the dirt in combination with the glue that was already underneath it really creates a solid, um, basically shell here of this, this dirt. So base what's, what's going to be next is to give everything a black base just to kind of tie everything together. I'll paint the sides of the styrofoam. These will, I will eventually later, you know, put some laminate on the side there, either some plastic or maybe some balsa wood, I'm not sure yet, to, to clean that up and make it look nice. But as, at least for this, we'll get this all primed black. The uh, the car base is now attached in here permanently. Wasn't necessarily planning on that, but it's not gonna be an issue. So we'll get this all, all primed black and then we'll start hitting it with, um, I think the colors that I am going to use here I'm going to give it a base coat of U.S. Earth Yellow. This is also from that Vallejo set that I painted the Bradley with. And then give it a really heavy coat of this aged white. The, the, the pictures really show um, a very, very whitish kind of sandy gravel here. So that's, that's going to be what I'm going to go for. I'll, I'll give it a solid coat of this aged white and then maybe hit some high spots with an actual pure white and uh, maybe do a little bit of dry brushing. We'll see, uh, we'll see how I like it. So uh, that's, uh, that's where we're at. Okay, so what I've done now is I gloss coated the entire vehicle. Let's see if we can better be there. So I gloss coated the entire vehicle and then I did a wash of MIG's interior wash. And the reason why I chose this one is because it's, it's, it's kind of a, dark dirty gray and I really didn't want to do a really strong dark or brown wash on the vehicle mainly just because the, the reference pictures I have don't necessarily show a lot of grime down in all the recesses so really what I was interested in doing was just kind of picking out a few details um, but really not going overboard so I gave it a quick wash of that clean that up and then I took some MIG weathering pigment here. This is the light dust. And I made a solution here with just 
it's water and a little bit of dish detergent <clears throat> to help um, break up the surface tension. And I applied that in certain areas to kind of show a buildup of, you know, sand and dust. Um, to really just kind of give it the appearance that this thing has, you know, been out in the desert collecting dust. Um, where it would build up in, in crevices and corners and things like that. So then what's what's next on he, for the Bradley then is to go in and give everything a light dusting with with aged white, which will help tie it into the actual base work and, and really kind of help blend it in and show it as, you know, that it's kind of accumulated an overall film of dust over the entire thing. I also went in and started picking out some of the metallic things. Um, I, I, I did a little bit of a metallic dry brush on the plate down here the the shovel the spare track links and just to kind of show that those are metallic neck i will also be adding all the straps to the to the stowage here um to show how those are attached and then i've currently got the tracks are out being primed right now just waiting to dry so as soon as those are dry i'll get those installed and then i've also started working on the driver figure. <clears throat> so this is this is the um, the the kit figure that comes with it. But what I've had to do is, so in the picture, the driver he he's in here visible, but he's looking kind of at the camera. So I had to cut his head and and rotate it. I also had to reposition this arm since it was kind of meant to the, this was meant to be the commander figure. So he's kind of meant to be out like with his both arms out on the open hatch of the of the commander's cupola so i had to reposition this arm so that he would actually fit in there and then what i'll need to do is go in and add um kind of a neck covering uh, i'll be using some uh, green stuff um it's, it's a two-part epoxy mixed together and then you can you can sculpt things with it so i'll be adding a scarf and then i actually have to add sunglasses he, the the person in the picture is wearing sunglasses so that will be coming up and then once once I get him finished and painted, then I can get him in the vehicle and I can get the vehicle all together and the, the, the Bradley will be done. And then it's just a matter of finishing up the Mercedes here, the Benz. Uh, I have gone and painted the interior. I just kind of, I, I, I threw some dust and some rubble in there just to kind of show that, you know, it's, it's being destroyed. Uh, cannot verify the accuracy of that, but it looks suitably destroyed to my eye. So yeah, we'll get the, the exterior painted on that and then we'll really kind of be, be wrapping this up here. So we're, we're, we're nearing the finish line and uh, we'll be done soon. All right, so <clears throat> the tank is done and I've kind of given, given it a light dusting of the aged white. So we'll just kind of help blend it in with with the color of the basing. Uh, what we've, you can see in here, we've got, got our driver in there. He's hiding in there. And uh, so the, basically the last things I have to do is I just have to finish painting up the gun that goes on the back deck here. And I have to finish painting up the two antenna posts here. And that's it, that'll be, that'll be finished there. So for this part here, um, I have begun painting the vehicle. So I've got the interior painted there and suitably dusty and dirty begun painting this uh, I will need to give the white a gloss coat and then I can go in and start and finish up the detail stuff painting the tail lights and the headlights and and uh, things like this and then adding I just started adding scratches here to where the tracks will be climbing up on the vehicle I, I, I made that mirror look like it was broken kind of hanging off there so a little bit of work to do on that, and then uh, this thing will be wrapped up. I also went ahead and added um, plastic strips all around the outside and painted them black. So that'll make that that makes that look kind of nice and and complete. And so yeah, we're we're really uh, we're really chugging along here and really right in the the finishing stretches. So I just really need to to finish this guy off and get those last details on the Bradley done and then and then we're done all right so um basically finished up the car here so 
gave it an overall coat of white, gloss coat, picked out details, scratched it up, added, you know, my poor attempt at busted safety glass in there, and uh, gave it a whole dusting of, of the aged white that we used on the groundwork here. And uh, in, in the picture, there's this random bit of white metal out here. So I just kind of threw that piece out there. So yeah, I think, uh, I think that's pretty much, pretty much done. Um, the door, the open door is here. So it will, it will get attached here. I'm not going to glue it just yet, mainly because um, I need to ship this to its final destination and that's just going to get it broken off. So I'm going to leave that off, allow the client to attach that once it arrives. Um, but I just, I use some clear evergreen styrene for the, for the windows to, um, you know, so I just cut out shapes and, and patterns. And then for the, for the broken glass, basically what I would do is just take the plastic you know, and then just do a whole bunch of score marks on it like this, and then do it perpendicular to kind of create this cross hatch. And then I'd go in and, and cut out little nicks and corners and pieces and whatnot. So, I mean, it's, it's simple, but I think it, I think it gets the point across. So here, uh, here we have the completed tank on the completed diorama base, and I, I think we're just about ready to take some final pictures here. So I do have, there's a couple of final little detail pieces here um, that need to dry. So we've got the two antennas, the magnetized antennas that go on the turret, and then the um, M249 that goes on the back deck of the vehicle. And and then we're done. So this is this has been a learning experience. Um, I had to do a lot more scratch building and, and the stuff that I'm used to on projects. I'm, I'm really quite proud of how the, um, the, the, the addition to the turret up here and, uh, the active or, or passive, um, detection system or whatever it is. Um, really happy with how that turned out. Uh, I'm happy with all the stowage. And again, the stowage is all based off of the reference picture. So I tried to get it as close as I could. And uh, just kind of all the fun little additions like the, the missing armor plate skirt there. And uh, the little grenade box over here that I had to scratch built. Um, and then obviously all the, the custom paint work on there. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. And I hope the client will be. Anyways, um, next up we'll be doing the uh, the final reveal. So, uh, if I, I know this video is not the same format as my normal videos, so if you didn't make it this far, I totally understand. And you can hear my air conditioner just kicked on. But anyways, like and subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.